Before you import any contact records into ACT, don't forget to back up your database. Also, take a note of how many contact records you've currently got in your database, 214. Now let's go over to the Excel file that I want to import. There you can see 19 new contacts are going to come across into ACT. I've added an ID status column. I've called all of those contact records prospects in port 2012 so that when I bring them into ACT, I'll be able to look them up by using that value in the ID status field to make sure they've imported correctly. We're back in ACT now to carry out the import. Don't forget to close your Excel file before you start the import process. So we'll come up to File, Import and Next and here you can choose the type of file. You could import records from another ACT database or Outlook contacts but we're going to use Excel. Click the Browse button to go and find the Excel file and open it and Next. It's contact records we want to import and next. If you choose the typical import, the field names in Excel must match exactly the field names in ACT. So I'm going to choose the custom import so I can check that the match is successful. Click next. We don't want to import the first record. So here you can see all of your Excel fields are showing on the left hand side and they're all in alphabetical order and wherever possible they've been matched to ACT fields here in the centre, address one to address one. But the business type field in Excel couldn't find a match in ACT so what I'm going to do is create a brand new ACT field. The county field needs to match to the state field so let's find that and everything else looks okay apart from the phone field let's set this to the ACT phone field select it come up to the arrow buttons at the top here and you can take a look at an individual contact record to make sure all the fields have been mapped across successfully and I'm happy with that and so now I can save the map so that I could use this in future the next time I'm importing records from Excel and save. Let's click next and here's that brand new ACT field that's been added. If I do want to rename it I can double click to change the name. I can double click here to change the field length. When you're happy with everything click next to go to the next step. In this step of the wizard, we can decide what to do if there are duplicates. So let's click the contact button. And if the source records match the destination records, then the default option is for those records to merge. But you could replace with the source contact, which gets rid of the old data. So I think the best option is to select merge here and just make sure that this is set to add because if the source records don't match then they need to be added to the database during the import. So these are all in fact the default settings. Click OK and if you want to confirm each match you can put a tick in here and that gives you an opportunity to decide whether to carry on importing a particular record or to skip it. Let's click Next. If there are any problems, the details would be showing here. Everything looks OK, so we'll press the Import button to start the import process. The import has been successful. You can always click to view the import log, and if there are any errors, they'll show here. But no problems on this occasion. Click OK and finish. And there you can see my database has now been increased to 233 records. I always like to check the import, so I'm going to come down to the ID status field in this lookup box and search for those new records that have come across and there you can see all of those 19 records that have been imported successfully into ACT.